Hello, bros. We're back with Near to the Wild Heart by Clarice the Spectre. Chapter 4, Joanna Takes a Stroll. I find it so relaxing, Joanna explained to Otavio, just as this space surrounded by four walls has a specific utility, created not so much by its being space as by the fact that it is surrounded by walls. Otavio transformed her into something that was not her, but Otavio himself, and which Joanna received out of pity for both of them because both were incapable of freeing themselves through love. Also because she submissively accepted her own fear of suffering, her inability to conduct herself beyond the frontier of revolt. Besides, how was she to tie herself to a man without permitting him to imprison her? How was she to prevent him from enclosing her body and soul within his four walls? And was there some means of acquiring things without those things possessing her? The evening was naked and transparent, without beginning or end. Birds, agile and black, darted sharply through the pure ear. They flew so softly that no human eye could accompany their flight. In the far distance, the mountain hovered, massive and dense. There were two ways of looking at it. First, by imagining that it was remote and huge. Second, by imagining that it was small and within reach. But in any event, a stupid mountain, brown and solid. How she loathed nature at times, without knowing why it struck her that this last reflection, associated with the mountain, concluded something, and banging on the table with the palm of her hand, she thought, that's it. That gray and greenish thing extended inside Joanna like a recumbent body, thin and harsh, right inside her, completely dry, like a smile without saliva, like strained eyes in need of sleep. What thing affirmed itself before the impassive mountain? What she could not grasp with her hand was now glorious, elevated and free, it was hopeless to try and summarize it, pure air, a summer's evening. For there was certainly more than this, a hollow victory over the lush trees, the aimless existence of all things. Oh, God, this, yes, this, were God to exist, surely he would abandon that world immediately, too clean by far like a house on a Saturday, quiet, not a speck of dust anywhere, smelling of soap, Joanna smiled. Why did a house that had been polished and clean leave her feeling lost as if she were in a monastery, disconsolate, wandering through corridors? And there were many other things she observed. If she applied ice to her liver, she was pervaded by remote, sharp sensations, by luminous, fleeting ideas. And if she were then to speak, she would say sublime, with outstretched hands, perhaps with her eyes closed. Then I find it so relaxing, she repeated. She felt like a withered branch stuck in midair, brittle, covered with peeling bark. Perhaps she might be thirsty, but there was no water nearby. And above all, the suffocating certainty that if a man were to embrace her at that moment, she would not feel the gentle sweetness in her nerves, but lemon juice causing her to smart, her body like wood near the fire, warped, split, desiccated. She could not reassure herself by saying, this is just an interval. Life will come afterwards like a tidal wave of blood, washing me, dampening the scorched wood. She could not deceive herself because she knew that she was also living and that those moments were the climax of something awkward, of a painful experience for which she should be grateful, almost as if she were experiencing time outside herself, quietly withdrawing. I've noticed that you like walking, Otavio remarked, gathering a twig. Besides, you liked going for a stroll even before we married. Yes, that's quite true, she replied. She could offer him any thought and so create a new relationship between them. This is what pleased her most in her dealings with others. She was under no obligation to follow the past, and with a word she can invent a way of life. If she were to say, I'm three months pregnant, that's it. Something would exist between them, even though Octavio was not particularly stimulating. 
With him, the most likely possibility was to link oneself to what had already taken place. Even so, beneath the gaze of his imploring, save me, save me, she opened her hand from time to time and allowed a little bird to take sudden flight. But sometimes, perhaps because of the nature of what she said, no bridge was created between them. On the contrary, a gap opened up. Otavio, she suddenly said to him, has it ever occurred to you that a dot, a single dot without dimensions, is the maximum of solitude? A dot cannot even rely on itself. From one moment to the next, it stands by itself, as if she had thrown a red-hot coal at her husband. The phrase leaped from one side to the other, slipped from her hands until he rid himself of her with another phrase, cold as ashes, ashes to cover that interval. It's raining. I'm hungry. It's a fine day. Perhaps because she did not know how to play, but she loved him. For that way he had a gathering. For that way he had of gathering twigs. She inhaled the clear, tepid air of evening, and that thing inside her, pleading for water, remained tense and rigid like someone waiting with eyes blindfolded for the shot to ring out. Night came, and she continued to breathe with the same sterile rhythm. But as dawn gently lit up the bedroom, things emerged fresh from the shadows. She felt the new morning insinuating itself between the sheets and opened her eyes. She sat on the bed. Inside her, it was as if there were no death, as if love could dissipate it, as if eternity meant renewal. There you go. Goodbye, bruv. Goodbye.